Barbenheimer, the so-called greatest movie duo of the century, is here. After a long and patient wait, both Oppenheimer and Barbie released this weekend, leaving fans divided over what they should see first. Personally, I chose the first option, and I'm very glad I did, and I'll explain why in a second. And if what I hear about Barbie is true, well, I, I can't wait for that either. I think we can all agree that Christopher Nolan has a reputation that greatly precedes himself. Very much like directors like Tarantino, Spielberg or Scorsese, he's one of the few filmmakers out there who from the name alone puts a very large amount of people in a very large amount of seats. So when I heard that he was making a new movie starring not just some of the biggest names in Hollywood, but practically every big star that there is, like fucking hell, how is this even possible? I felt both excitement and concern. See, while a cast of big names is great and all, we've still seen plenty of examples where a film of this magnitude doesn't match the expectations, and although I'm a huge fan of Nolan's work, especially from the 2000s, his last few pictures just haven't quite hit the mark for me. But something told me that this time would be different. Something told me that this movie would defy my expectations and more. And well, I'm glad to say that, yep, it's fantastic. Oppenheimer is Nolan's best movie in years. There's so much to praise, from the acting, the camera work, the writing, the complete absence of crappy CGI that we crave for as an audience in the modern day, and the pacing that, despite the movie coming in at 3 hours long, never lets you rest for even a second. And fuck, I was tempted to go on a toilet break on a few occasions, but I knew that I couldn't even miss a minute of this movie just because of how quickly things go from one event to another. Now what I will say is, this film is not here to please you, nor bring you much joy. What it's here to do is tell a story, leaving a lot up to interpretation, and has you questioning the decision to make the bomb quite a bit yourself. Because I mean, you don't exactly walk out of this thing with a bright smile on your face, but nonetheless, that's the whole point. It's about a fight for power, manipulation, moral stances, harsh realities, and it's all culminated in a way that keeps you engaged and hooked to every event happening on screen, including even the smallest of discussions about quantum theory. As for the cast and acting, fucking spectacular. Killian Murphy smashes it out of the park in the main role, delivering what is easily the performance of his career. This guy never felt like he was given that big opportunity as a leading man on the big screen, especially in a movie of this magnitude, and it's great to see him get a role that's extremely well deserved, and boy does he do it justice. He nails every segment of this movie, from the happy moments to the terrifying realisations, and for those who know him so well in other roles, you'll genuinely believe that you're watching an entirely different man altogether. I mean, honestly, him and every other performer here put their all into their characters, and you really get to see every actor given an opportunity to prove what they're capable of. Downey Jr. especially must have been so relieved to finally have something to dig his hands into after what's been like 10 years of just green screens and pretending to be a man in flying armour, and it really shows. He delivers what's easily a close second in terms of performances here, with the only reason being that his character isn't the main role, and I mean, he'd done so much in the first half of the movie, but holy shit does he steal the screen in the third act. There's so many other great performances here, but I'd be here all day if I was to talk about every single one. The, the one person that I didn't feel like fit into their role all that well was Florence Pugh, who, don't get me wrong, is a great actress when given the right script and can do great things on screen, but something just felt off in her performance. But hey, that's just my opinion. What I will say is, though, there's going to be a lot of Oscar nominations here for sure. Not that the Oscars matter that much nowadays, but you know. Speaking of the third act, something that I will say is that the final hour or so feels like a completely different movie in a sense. For most of the film, it's building up to this one big event, and yeah, it does switch between different time periods, but they all have relevance towards what it's building up to, and once that's over, it really dials down on like a singular event that's going on, and becomes a whole new ball game altogether really. Not to say that's a bad thing at all, but it is much more noticeable than the first two hours in terms of what the movie's now going for. You definitely begin to feel the runtime at this point, which is one of the few criticisms that I have, alongside the fact that sometimes the music is so loud that you struggle to understand what the people are saying, which is nowhere near as bad as it was in Tenet, but still something that came through. Now, the film does end on a note that is deeply impactful and will really get you thinking about the grand scale of what the bomb did for people's lives. What makes the film so interesting is that it really is centred on what's going through the mind of Oppenheimer and follows his emotions and stress as he goes through the process of making the bomb a reality and the crazy amount of work they actually took. And when the main outcome of the film finally happens, the film gets you rooting for all the characters and the satisfying payoff, only to contrast it with the harsh facts that the film never really allows you to consider up to this point. By the end, you're not exactly left satisfied with the outcome or happy with it, but more questioning the world we live in and how we as humans can perceive the same event in so many different ways over time and depending on what side we're looking from. Because in reality, are the thousands of people who worked on the bomb each remembered individually or is it just the one man who had the idea? 
How can we strip a man of his job and security rights, only years later to give him a medal for his contributions? It tackles plenty of perspectives, and really exposes a lot of the dark sides behind how something like this comes to fruition, and if the making of the atomic bomb is something that you were previously never really interested in learning about, this film almost makes it something that you can't not look into. With all that being said, Oppenheimer is not your typical Hollywood blockbuster, but it certainly will stay with you for days after its viewing, really getting you to think about the greater impact of something like this, and when a film is capable of doing that, well, you know it's something special. So if you haven't seen the movie already, just give it a watch on the biggest screen possible, and I guarantee that, at least after you've had some time to let it sink in, you'll be very glad you did so. Anyway, thank you for watching the video, like, subscribe, all that jazz, won't force you though, of course, and I will see you in the next one very, very soon. Bye!